Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. We are going to be making a hinged ring notebook. This is a perfect little notebook for uh, writing your lists, um, just keeping some notes, and you could even pop res uh, recipes in here if you wanted to as well. This is perfect because these little clips will actually undo and you can take your pages out, write down your notes and then pop it back in if you need to or if it's a shopping list or something like that, you can take it out and you can replace these a bit later on down the track. But before we get started today, if you would like to consider subscribing to my channel so you can keep up to date with some more videos, that would be amazing. So you're gonna need a few things for this little notebook. I am going to list them as follows. We're gonna go ahead and start making the cover first. For this one, I'm just using some scrapbooking paper today. For my original one, I used some prints that I'd made on a gel press. I haven't made many prints in a while now, so I'm running a bit low on stock. So for this one, we're just gonna use some scrapbooking paper. This is one sheet. Um, I have actually got some left. It was a 12 by 12 inch piece of paper. Um, so you'll have plenty of room for this exercise here. So what I'm gonna do is just mark which one will be the back and which one will be the front. And I'm gonna do the same on these two pieces of paper as well. So I like that piece, that can be the front, that can be the back. So really, I'm just going to center this right there and then we'll have some overhang that we can fold over, over the top here. I'm just gonna mark off roughly where I'm gonna be gluing this down. And start gluing that up. Use my bone folder and find a scrap piece of paper. Squash that down. I just like to tuck the paper over the edge a little bit just to make sure that I'm getting all my corners stuck down. Getting any air bubbles out as well. Great, pop that one aside and I'll just do this one here. I've given you some measurements at the beginning of the video for the size of the original notebook that I made. But while I was making my preparations yesterday for this video, I actually uh, managed to make it a little tiny bit smaller. Somehow I mustn't have been paying attention. Um, so this one will be a little bit smaller than the other side, but you can go ahead and 
just use the measurements that I've given you, or you can create your own size. It's entirely up to you. There's no rules. You can make yours a bit bigger. You can make yours a little bit smaller. Uh, you'll just have to adjust things to accommodate the size that you're making yours for. But this is such an easy notebook to make that measurements and things like that can be pretty flexible. You can't really go wrong. So that's that one done. Pop that one aside to dry. So on the back, I'm just going to mark off approximately where I'm going to just trim it down so I can fold these flaps over. I'd like to leave a couple of millimeters in between the corner and the cutting line. just so it's not too flush and then we've got bare corners on our covers. So we just want a tiny little bit of excess on the edges there. Um, and I'll explain or show you how to tuck those in when we come down to gluing everything down. I always just sketch this out. You might just want to be bold and get in there and cut straight away. That's up to you. And the same on the front. A couple of mil. And now I'm just going to chop that down. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these side bits to the back. down and then I end up with loads of it just all over the place. Anywho, at least I know it's not going to come apart. So I usually do the sides first and try not to get glue on the front. If you do then it doesn't really matter. just steady on with the glue. I always tend to put a bit too much glue on because I never want anything to get unstuck. So sides first. Just make sure they're glued down. So you can see now why I've left a tiny little bit when I was cutting my corners just to overhang so I can tuck these little bits in and when I fold it over we won't have any bare corners.
they go. No bare corners. We can always go off and round that off a little bit, a little bit later if we want to. I'll just do this last bit. That's that one done. I'll go ahead and I'll do the other one and come back to you shortly. Okay, so that's the first part of our covers done. Front cover, back cover. We're going to cover up this little bit now, just so it doesn't look so ugly. Again, two little pieces of scrapbooking paper. Just like so. So I'm just going to get my scrap and my glue sheet and glue this down. Apologies if you can hear my dog huffing and puffing in the background. He's trying to get in the five centimeters of sunlight that's uh, coming through the back door and trying to squish his entire long uh, dashed body into it and huffing and puffing as he goes. Which is fine as long as he doesn't bark because that's going to scare the crap out of all of us if he does. So we're just going to centralize that. That's why we've made these little pieces a tiny bit smaller than the back cover. Wash everything down. That's that one done. Now we'll move on to the next one. And there we have our two covers done. I can't remember which one's the front and which one's the back, but I like both of them, so it doesn't really matter. When it comes time to putting everything together, I guess I'll determine then which one I like best to go on the front. What we're going to do now is measure up the holes where these rings are going to go. So on this one, on the inside, I measured, I can't remember if I used centimeters or inches. All right. So I think I went inches. I went with half an inch and then so half an inch in from the spine and then an inch from the top and the bottom. So what you need to remember here is that one is going to be the front and one is going to be the back. So the best way to punch your holes when it comes time to do this is to sandwich together 
as you would if it was going to be your book. If you do it like this, then that's not how your book is going to sit when it's finished or when it's all put together. It'll be like so. So I'm just going to measure one. So we're going to go about an inch, half an inch. Just lightly mark. And then line that up. Hold on. There we go. So line your half inch point. And just mark a one inch point, then the same on this side as well. Marking in an inch. So I'm going to use my awl to roughly mark where I'm going to punch the holes properly. So it looks like I've marked on the back cover here. This is going to be the front cover, so I need to line those two up. Obviously I can't see where I've marked where I'm going to punch my holes, so I'm going to just swap them around. Line everything up and use my awl to just punch through and hopefully, there we go. So it's left a mark on the front there and on the back there. So when I use my screw punch to get through here, it should be even on both sides now. If you're using a screw punch, um, just make sure that the size of the punch that you're using is a tiny bit bigger than the eyelet that you'll be using. Um, if you're using a hole punch, make sure that the size of the hole matches the size of the eyelet that you're using as well. Um, and some people might have a crocodile, um, which is one of these, one of these things here. This is a pretty good investment back in the day. I wouldn't mind getting myself a bigger one, but uh, this does the job nicely. So I'm going to be using a screw punch today. The eyelet that I'm using, or the eyelets that I'm using, have a three millimeter ID. So ID is inner diameter. The inside of my eyelet is three millimeters across. A crocodile will be able to punch that for me. Um, most people have probably got an eyelet setter that can accommodate different sizes of eyelets as well. So um, I don't actually have one of those, so I've got my crocodile to do the job for me. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to punch my holes through the middle here. So 
sometimes it takes a few goes. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and punch the holes through the rest of them. You don't need to see that because it can be a little bit time consuming. So that's my covers done. Nicely lined up. If it's a little bit off, it doesn't really matter because this is fairly loose anyway. You're barely gonna notice. Now we're gonna set these eyelets. Once this is done, our front covers are pretty much ready to go. So this little tool is just so handy. Um, I bought it years and years and years ago and I have used it for so many projects. So when I was using my screw punch, I used a, a punch that was 3.5 millimeters. The eyelets that I'm using are three millimeters. You can use any size eyelet you like. Just make sure that your ring is gonna fit through it. There is no point in setting eyelets when your rings aren't gonna slide through easily enough. did one while I was poking around trying to find my crocodile off camera. So loud. Makes me jump every single time. That's that done. So now we're going to set up the pages that go inside your notebook. I have already punched holes in mine because as I said, it is a bit of a lengthy process. If you're using a screw punch, it's only gonna go through so many pieces of card at a time. So I had to do this in increments and it took me a little while to do. But what I've done initially to set up where your uh, pages are going to sit or where you're gonna punch your holes is I've taken my piece of card and I've laid it on the back. roughly like so. So it's about the same size or is the same size as the sheet that we use to cover the back of our cover. So what I've done is I've laid it on the back, flipped it over, then I've got a pencil and I've just marked or I've used my awl actually and I've roughly marked in the middle of my eyelet. as to where I'm going to punch the holes. Then I've gone through and I've just put my stack together like so and then punched as hard as I can to mark through the pages as a stack. Then afterwards I've gone through with my screw punch. So I've got a few pages here that I'll just show you roughly what I've done. Lined it up. Okay. 
my screw punch tends to fill up with paper a lot if from time to time I've just kept on going and it makes the punch even tighter and tighter to screw so I usually just get in there with my awl and I get those pieces of paper out and now it's decided to be a little bit difficult And do the same on this side as well. There we go, nice and clean. gonna fiddle with that bit and then I'll come right back what I did forget to mention before I started punching the holes in my uh, pages here was the index cards that I've been using uh, basically a big long one this is a five by eight size index card so I've chopped it down to suit the measurements so you can get two pages out of one sheet here to make these ones here. This one has, I think, 28 pages. Um, so 14 of these index cards will do the trick. I also had a bunch of smaller ones lying around. These ones were actually too small, but the nice thing about these ones is that you can make your journal this way if you wanted to so you're not limited to just having it in a portrait style you could go landscape if you wanted to as well and uh, same goes for the larger size ones if you can find the bigger cards then by all means make a landscape size journal as well it's up to you and we're pretty much at the last part of making our notebook now we just need to put it all together opening up our hinged clips or our hinged rings which one do I want as the front and the back that can be my front this can be the back rings through probably best to put your pages through in bits or little bits at a time If you find that you've put too many pieces of card in or too many pages in, your, your book will sit a little bit funny when you manage to close these rings. If you can't close your rings, then you've put too many pages in and if it sits kind of like that, then you've put too many pages in. You want it to be able to sit nice and closed like this. But that is how you make a little hinged ring journal. So now you can go ahead, you can pop your lists in here, the notes, you can write recipes in there if you want to. You could journal in there if you wanted to. You could turn it into an art journal and pop paintings in here. You could pop collage in here. It's entirely up to you. And you know, if you do decide to get creative with it and you mess up a page, all you need to do 
is take it out. And you're done. Nobody will ever know that you made a mistake. So that's it guys. So very easy to make. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It doesn't take long to make at all. But thanks for joining me again today guys. Once again, if you like my channel, please consider subscribing. Um, I'm really enjoying making these videos for everyone. So uh, I hope to have another one up in another couple of weeks. Uh, but yeah, let me know how you go with this. Any questions, just leave a comment down below. And uh, yeah, have fun with it, guys. Enjoy. Have a great day.